Hi there, welcome to Nepi Invest and welcome to another answer and reply video where I answer your questions to the best of my ability and also reply to your comments uh, no matter what you're talking about or writing about. Now I do want to get through quite a few of your comments and questions in today's video so let's get stuck straight into it and go back a few weeks ago from a comment written by Black Top Images, who's trying to explain why he or she believes the banks are overvalued right now, has to do with a higher level of ETF investing and dollar cost averaging. And the last uh, comment this person mentions, they'll always be overvalued based on that alone. Now, I think there's an element to truth in this, but also I like to uh, just argue against this because the banks are overvalued right now. But over the past 18 months, if you, actually, in fact, if you go back 18 months ago, I don't think you can say the banks were overvalued because the share price of CBA has risen 60 or 7% in the past 18 months. Share price has risen from $90 to $155. And I don't think you could say and argue that's because of ETF investing and dollar cost averaging. Something else is happening with the banks. Not sure what it is. And the other thing I'd like to say is, I do know someone who has come in to a lot of money, a fair bit of money, and the first thing this person says was, I'm going to buy some shares in the banks. And I can't do give any sort of uh, advice. I don't want to give advice. And I, I was thinking about that and have been thinking about that ever since. So this person obviously just thinks the banks are safe, maybe some good returns, but all you have to do is have a look at the valuations of the banks right now. Have a look at the dividend yields, and you're not going to get much return from the banks if you invest right now. But someone, not sure who they are, but some people, institutions are buying the banks right now. And don't forget, the market can remain irrational for a long period of time. And I do believe the markets are irrational just now. Now, the funny thing is, I had a quick look at CBA before recording this video. And the share price of CBA has risen significantly in the past few weeks, up to $155. Now, the funny thing is, the last time the value of CBA was significantly overvalued like it is now, was back in early 2015. You could have bought CBA at a price to book of about three, P ratio of maybe 20, and you saw no return on your investment for about, it was about six or seven years, maybe even longer than that. Share price did nothing during that period. And that happens a lot. Not only that, if you go back to that time, the chart looks really good. The chart looked brilliant at that point in time just like it looks really good right now. So that's a problem when you don't or ignore valuation. If you just look at the chart of CBA back in late to, or early 2015, late 2014, chart looks brilliant, but the valuation stuck. It was really overvalued. And the reason I say that is if you have a look at the price to book ratio of CBA over the last 10 years, it reached a peak of three back in early 2015. And then the share price did nothing for eight years. Right now, it's at 3.5. So it was overvalued then. Now it's significantly overvalued. It is by far the most expensive bank in the world. And I'd, I'd also say the most overvalued bank, possibly the most overvalued company in the world, because CBA is not going to grow over the next 10 years. It's not. It's not going to grow. Even the CEO has said that. It's not going to grow. There's no growth. So you only buy companies with a P ratio of, I think it's P ratio of CBA right now is about 27. You only buy companies with a P ratio of 27 if they're going to grow significantly over the next uh, five or 10 years. So I just don't understand this. This is a definite sign that the market is irrational when it comes to the banks. Uh, anyway, so that's what I'm going to say when it comes to uh, this particular comment from Blacktop Images. Maybe there's a level, level, uh, some sort of truth to it, but there's also some other reason why people are piling into the banks right now. Uh, lack of financial education, maybe uh, ETF investing, dollar cost averaging, maybe people just think the banks are safe. Don't know, but eventually the tide is going to turn. And that point, when the tide turns, you don't want to be holding the banks because you're not going to get much return over the next five to ten years. In fact. In my opinion, just my opinion, the returns in CBA over the next 10 years will be negative. Yes, negative, even with a dividend. Okay, so thank you for that comment, a black top images. Now let's move on to Pav and Hanani. Really like your work. Could you provide your thoughts on these two companies, Findi and Spun Resources? Now, Findi was my stock of the day on November the 15th. 
I am a shareholder of Fendi. It is my second largest holding simply because I bought some shares many, many years ago, also uh, took some options, and the share price has increased from 20 or 30 cents up to $7.50. And because of the increase in share price, it is now my largest holding. Now, I can't really say much about their business model. This was or is now a trade for me. And when I see the tide turning, when I see the, uh, I wouldn't say the hype coming out of this stock because I think they are succeeding with what they're trying to do, uh, ATMs and other things in India. But when I see that hype coming out, whether the hype is the right word, I will take profits in Fendi because I don't think you could say it is a high quality company at this point in time. By this point, the chart looks absolutely spectacular. No complaints about the chart. In fact, if you do look at the weekly chart, in fact, I have to go right to now, you just see the share price just taking off. Not only is the share price taking off, look at the volume over the past year. In fact, one year ago, in fact, about one year ago, I had to think about my options. In fact, I didn't think my options would be in the money. So the options could be exercised at about 90 cents. And about one year ago, oh, November 16, funny enough, on November the 15th, so exactly one year ago, the share price of Fendi rose 54.7 cents. I'm not sure what caused that. And then the share price sort of did nothing until those options were exercised. And that's one of the reasons why the share price did nothing for about two months. But as soon as those options were exercised, many people exercised their options in late January. The share price has absolutely taken off. So really, the breakout for Fendi happened one year ago, November 15. You could even argue just before that, but definitely November 15, 2023 was a breakout for this company, and the share price has increased sevenfold since then. And the company went into trading halt. They've made another acquisition, and the market likes it. This is a really brilliant-looking chart. And again, for me, it's just trade, and as soon as the trade stops, I will take my profits. Uh, at this point in time, I do have my sell point at around $5 or just below $5. I probably will lift that over the next few weeks, particularly if the share price keeps on going up or at least goes sideways. So that's where I will sell the rest of my holdings. So I did take profits or just once along the way, but it's still because the share price has increased significantly. It is still my second largest holding. Now onto Spartan Resources. I don't know much about this company. So all I'm going to talk about is the chart. Pretty sure it's just gold. Spartan Resources. Okay, so this comment was released or uh, written about three weeks ago when the chart looks pretty good. Now, Spinal Resources is gold company. So the share price of Spinal Resources, not perfectly, but the share, share price of Spinal Resources will be correlated to an extent by gold prices. And that's the reason why Spartan Resources share price has decreased significantly, 33% or so, over the past few weeks because gold price has been under pressure by a little bit. So this is probably the first time we have seen a little bit of weakness in Spartan Resources share price. Share price has fallen through the 100-day moving average and it's hovering just above the 200-day. Uh, so a little bit of weakness right now in Spartan Resources. This could be by the dip situation, and I think it all has to do with gold and what's going to happen with gold prices over the next few months, whether Spartan Resources rebounds. Now, I have taken profits in one of my gold um, stocks, so I did have, was it three gold stocks? Now I only have two. So that's me unwinding my gold positions because of this little bit of weakness. Now, if gold takes off again, maybe I'll buy back into either that company or another gold company. But at this point in time, uh, I am seeing a little bit more risk in the gold and silver sector. Z sectors or sector. Okay, so thank you for that comment, uh, Pavan Tarnani. And Stuart Somerville has done wonderfully well with Spinal Resources. Up 783, should hit 800%. But this was written, uh, we'll say about October 20. And since then, yeah, that was just near the highs. At $1.60, the share price has pulled back. And that's probably the problem with um, mining companies. They are so, the, the share price of the mining company is so beholden to the underlying um, commodity that uh, management don't have much control. They have a certain level of control, but not absolute control. And that is my personal problem with mining companies. In fact, I have thought maybe not even trade mining companies because you just not, don't know what's around the corner when it comes to commodities. 
Uh, Trent Howard, any tips on how to best search through your videos for when you have covered a stock in the past? I don't know. When I search, I just do it in this, search across your channel. For instance, Findy. Let's have a look at Findy. Here we go. I've got three videos with Findy in it. And I've done way more videos than that when it comes to Findy. Maybe there's a certain, you can only go back a certain period of time. Uh, anyway, I, other than that, I have no idea how to search. I'm probably not an expert on searching. Search across your, what about, what if I do Findy? There it is, Findy. So that's, I'm not sure if you can do that. This is just through YouTube Studio, searching across my channel. So I'm not sure if you can do that. So maybe someone else out there can help Trent Howard in how to best search through videos. I don't do it when it comes to YouTube, when I'm looking through other videos, but um, uh, I'm, I'm assuming there's some easier way to do it or some way that's similar to what I do. Terry Stone, what's your thoughts on Nuix? Do you think it's starting a down trend? So again, this was three weeks ago. Let's have a look at Nuix chart. So share price did drop a few days ago because they did have their AGM. And I thought maybe that's a bit of an overreaction from the market. So if we go back to October 20, there's no sign of a downtrend at that point. Yeah, there's no actual, there's no sign of a downtrend beginning with Nuix and share price kept on going up. Share price decreased significantly on the 12th of November with their AGM down, what was it? Down 22.2%. It rallied 10% the next day, down 5.4%. On Friday session, I think it's trying to find a bit of a balance right now. And it would be surprised to see the share price go up from here, but it also wouldn't be surprised to see the share price decrease a bit. So I'm a little bit uncertain with the movement and the sentiment behind or with Nuix right now because of that really big down day. Now I do have a sell price at about five dollars. I might put that up to five fifty now. I think five fifty is a nice little level. Uh, so if I do see the share price fall below five fifty, I think that would be a sign for me to get out and take profits in New Week. So at this point in time, I'm just trading New Week. So I don't really care about how the company is doing. Don't really care about the AGM, how profitable they might be in a few years. This is simply a trade for me. So just looking at the chart. So there is signs that maybe the uptrend is coming to an end, unless the market did overreact when it comes to the AGM. Okay, JC, mind having a look at Hazer again? I know you touched it on recently, but it has gone on a nice little run, clearing some important resistance levels since then. Thanks, Nepi. So this is another case where I don't think Hazer has any revenue, so more of a story stock, but I do think if they become successful with what they're doing, this company should be much bigger than it is now. But the question there is, will they become successful with their doing? So even though the company might have a good story, I think the majority of good stories don't make it. Uh, so that's the problem with stories. Most stories don't have an ending. Well, the ending is not that good anyway. Uh, I think all stories have an ending, but the ending is maybe not what you want. Uh, maybe a disappointing ending. Uh, anyway, so let's have a look at Hazer. So for me, this is just a chart trading, a possible trade. And even with a possible trade, I'm not really looking for stories at this point in time. Uh, maybe one or two, but that's about it. Okay, so if you go back to when this comment was released, late October, the chart was starting to look better. We did see a good month or so. Share price rallied from $0.28 cents back up to $0.44. Cents. But the problem with that, the share price was still in the downtrend. This was a short-term uptrend, short-term shift in sentiment, but you need more. I would like more signs than that. The other thing is the share price, there was a nice little resistance level. A really good resistance level at about 46 cents. And the share price didn't quite get to that level and has pulled back. Now, I think possibly, possibly the bottom has been reached. I need confirmation about that. Uh, and the reason I say that is we did see the share price rally has pulled back and it looks like the share price is starting to go up again. So possible higher bottom. That's a good sign. Now, if I see the share price get above the recent highs, 44 cents, that could be a sign the trend is starting to change. So I'm a li I think it's a little bit too early right now to say whether Hazer Group is moving into an uptrend just yet. But we have to well, I have time on my side, and I will continue to follow the share price of this company. And you can see in the past, we have seen the share price of Hazer Group go on a bit of runs, short-term runs, and the share price pulls back. 
We've seen that numerous times before, and it looks like this is just another type. That's just my opinion. Uh, anyway, so we'll remain, I'll keep Hazer on my watch list, but that's about it. Anthony says, do you have any interest in fertilizer agricultural companies? No. Straight away, no. Some good names are NTR, LMNR, and UAN. Curious if you diversify your portfolio into this sector. No. Main reason I consider agricultural companies fairly similar than mining companies. So I will trade agricultural companies. I'd say fertilizer companies are the same thing. And the main reason behind that is the lack of control management have in regards to how successful the company is because there's many things out of their control. Weather is one of them. Another thing out of control is just blights, if that's a word, or things that can affect the crops. Uh, also, supply and demand is also very important when it comes to agricultural companies. Uh, a good example is select harvest. Almonds. Uh, if, uh, say, California have an absolute bumper crop, when it comes to almonds, then select harvest will be negatively affected by that. So that's the main reason I had, don't have much interest in holding any agricultural companies for the long term, but I will trade them. And then even saying that, I haven't been that successful trading agricultural companies. And I don't know these companies. NTR, let's have a look at NTR. Is this international companies? NTR, Nutrien? Let's have a look at Nutrien. Oh, ugly chart. I process agriculture. Uh, I'm just having a look at the. There was a nice increase in revenue up until 2022, then a drop in revenue. This company's pretty big, 22.8 billion. And yeah, I this for me because I'm trading it. I, this would be a no go for me because the chart looks pretty ugly. Uh, let's have a look at the other two companies you mentioned: LMNR and UAN. LMNR, LMNR. These are companies I've never heard of before. Lime on Nira. Okay, this one will, might be a little bit different because the chart looks pretty good. Markup is only 476 million. If I look at the revenue of this company, it's flat. Not much revenue, barely profitable, uh, but the chart does look interesting. And what's the other one? UAN? Uh, I'm going to be have this. UAN, I was right. Is this CVR Partners? What's the chart looking like here? And I'd say not for this one. Yeah, no trend at all. Uh, share price has been going sideways for about a year. Mark up 764.9 million. But that's just me. I just have very little interest in holding agriculture fertilizer companies for the long term simply because I think they're more price takers than price makers. And I'm looking for high quality companies when it comes to long term holdings. Otherwise, I'll just trade them. And for me, this is more of a trading situation, uh, trading companies than anything else. Uh, Stuart Somerville, oh, a couple of comments from Stuart Somerville in regards to SS1, which is a silver company. I think it's called Sun Silver. Sun Silver, big reserve. Sun Silver will go to 120, watch it go up tomorrow. So because this comment was released three weeks ago, we can have a look to see how Sun Silver has gone. And I can almost, almost guarantee you, Sun Silver share price has dropped because silver prices have dropped. If it hasn't, that would tell us there's a bit of strength in this company. So Sun Silver, let's have a look at the chart. And there we go. Share price has dropped a fair bit because it's silver. Silver has dropped. And again, this should be proof that even though you might like the management, you might like their reserves or their projects, if silver prices go down, the share price of this company will go down. So ultimately, it comes back to what you think about silver and then what you think about the company. I think those two questions are very important. But the first question is, what's going to happen to silver? So share price of Sun Silver has dropped from $1.16 back to $0.64. Cents. It did get quite close to $1.20, by the way. It did get quite close to $1.20 when Stuart wrote that comment. Uh, very close to $1.20 uh, and has pulled back significantly. So thank you. And it's just proving to myself why maybe I should not be trading mining companies. Yes. And he's reached another one. Watch gold and silver all-time high. I'm pretty sure they both reached near all-time highs recently. Let's have a look at the charts. Not recently. When I say recently, I mean a few weeks ago. So all-time high for gold was uh, in late October. So just after Stuart wrote that comment, it has pulled back. 
a little bit negative with gold. We have seen gold through a, fall through a support level, and silver has dropped significantly as well. Uh, this is silver. It has dropped into a support zone, which is the long-term moving average channel, but it fell through a support level uh, last week. So if silver doesn't start to rally again, this will be starting to look a little bit more negative. Okay. Health 7085 says, uh, Nepi, keep, Nepi, thinking of taking position in 4DX, which is 4D Medical. Thoughts on the chart? Recently signed an agreement with Philips to distribute their CT software. Also, would you consider talking about how to work out tax on SMSF trade? No idea when it comes to SMSF. So I would definitely not be the person to talk about that because uh, my superannuation is not really an SMSF. It's just with net wealth and you, I can buy and trade companies I want, but it's not really an SMSF. I don't have to do, think about taxation things with that. They do all the work for me, put it that way. Anyway, so I can't answer that one. Okay, 4DX. So this was just a trading or chart. I would say this is also a storage stock, but I do like what they're doing. And I do have this company on my watch list just because if I see some motor, uh, some momentum with their business, particularly when it comes to the financials, I think this could be a nice little play. Okay, so the company did release something significant on the 27th of September. So I'm thinking maybe it's that deal. We can just confirm that. 27th of September. Four DX. 27th of September. Da -da, announcements. Four D Medical signs Philips reseller agreement for U.S. market. Yes, so that was that uh, wide share price popped up on that particular day. It was close to being a breakout. Uh, apart from maybe financial news, I prefer more robust financial news, if that is a word. I like so, sort of like profit upgrades or uh, the company beats their guidance, that sort of thing. Not when it comes to a contract or anything like that. I prefer. I don't really consider that a robust financial announcement, but really big volume coming on on that day. Share price actually re-increased the next day. I remember thinking, ooh, this is starting to look interesting. And then the share price fell four days in a row. So a fair bit of selling came in, which is understandable why sellers may have gained control of the share price again, because quite a few shareholders probably bought at higher prices and they found the opportunity to sell. And there was not enough buyers to overcome the sellers. And that's why the share price fell. And unfortunately, that really shifted the momentum back into um, the seller's way. That's the way, or the momentum went back towards the sellers. And that's why the share price has continued to fall. And in fact, it's dropped back down to 48 cents. So just based off the chart, yeah, not that interested just yet. But still, the future might be looking bright for 40 Medical. But I just need a little bit more proof from the company that they have hit the big time. So I'm not there just yet with that company. But again, I'm probably a little bit more risk averse than I have been in the past, which is probably understandable because I think as you get older, you do become a little bit more risk averse. And as your capital builds and builds and builds, I think it is prudent to become risk averse. You want to protect your capital to the best of your ability. Anyway, that's just my thoughts. And maybe just age, you just become a little bit more risk averse. I don't know. A DS HW five CC. Hey Nepi, have you look at uh, AFL and Sequoia? Both fundamentally sound. AFL turning around and Sequoia returning capital. I have talked about AFL before. AFL legal. I'm not a big fan of these sort of companies. It's a legal company, fairly small legal company. I just don't like lawyers. I can't, well, I shouldn't say that. I don't care if you're a lawyer. I don't care about law companies, accounting companies. I don't care about professional companies. What do, what do you call them? Uh, white collar professional companies listed because the talent is people and people cost a lot of money. I prefer the talent to be something that doesn't cost any money, like software, that sort of thing. Or maybe even for mining companies, the talent is the mineral, the commodity, the iron ore. That's the talent, not the people. But for law companies, accounting companies, the talent is the people and they cost money. So. I'm not the biggest fan with law companies, so AFL Legal, uh, Shine Justice, Slater and Gordon, or accounting is um, Kelly Partners, that sort of thing. Although Kelly Partners chart looks absolutely brilliant, but 
significantly overvalued. Now, when it comes to the chart, no interests at this point in time for this particular chart. I will trade law companies and accounting companies if I see a nice chart. For me, nothing here at all. Now, Sequoia, I actually am a shareholder of this company. I've held shares in this company for a long time. And I think as the share price drops, this becomes really intriguing. Now, there have been some problems with the company, some infighting among directors, I think, something like that's been happening. I haven't been following the company that closely, to be honest with you, but the company does look really cheap. When I say that, markup is 41 million, dividend yield of 20.9%. Doesn't say or doesn't have a price to earnings ratio, but if you look at the profit of this company a few years ago, uh, this company was making $5 million profit. So that means the P ratio of this company is like eight, because I think there is a chance they will return to that sort of profitability. So I think this is becoming intriguing just because of valuation. I definitely wouldn't sell. I'm not thinking of even selling this because valuation-wise, this is looking cheap. But just negative sentiment in this at this point in time has driven the share price down to the point where I do think there's some good value. Now, I'm kicking myself a little bit because I was thinking of selling this at about 60 cents. It got to 60 cents a few times late last year, early this year. And now share price is almost half, which is ridiculous. Anyway, so to answer your question, returning capital. I didn't know Sequoia was returning. It just shows you sometimes I own a company, I have no idea what's happening. Uh, okay. Uh, they're doing a buyback. I like that. Uh, they're still dividend, giving a dividend. Uh, so the last dividend was how much was it? So this particular company is in my um, super, and I don't tend to follow my super company or companies I hold in my super as closely as possible. And ultimately, what I like to do is every single company in my super, I would prefer those to be high quality companies. So I don't have to look at those companies all that often. At this point in time, there's quite a few companies that I probably should sell because I wouldn't classify as high quality. And this is one of them. So a nice five cent dividend. So this company has a really good dividend yield. That's true. This company has a pretty good dividend yield. So obviously the market is thinking something bad is going to happen to the future of this company. Uh, so dividend yield is above 10%. You can see, yeah. Anyway, I think definitely there is an argument that this company is undervalued or really good value, but why is the market so down on this company? I think that is also a really interesting question. Is the market really wrong when it comes to Sequoia? Thank you. Okay, Bulldog, what's going on with uh, Bellevue Gold? Do you see a bullish future? I bought way too high, $1.95. Uh, since a uh, Simply Wall Street software seems to think it has a good future ahead and it's a healthcare company, that's not right, with a fair value of $6.78. Uh, BGL is definitely not a healthcare company. I'm pretty sure it is Bellevue Gold. Yes. Uh, so I think um, Sensei um, has his companies mixed up. Uh, what else could be BGL? I'm not sure. And Simon PT says, I still like a BGL. Okay. Again, this is exactly true. Uh, what I talk about, um, what I talked about, Spartan Resources, can be applied to Bell View Go. Now, I'm pretty sure they did a couple raising not long ago. By the way, I am trading Bell View Gold. Uh, and this is one of my gold stocks I am trading right now that unfortunately share price has turned because gold prices have turned. Uh, so let's just have a look at the chart for Bellevue Gold. You'll be able to see that. Now, the chart was looking really good, beautiful chart from late 2022 all the way through to July this year. And then the company did something silly, I believe, on the 26th of July. Share price dropped 22% on that day. Was that a couple raising? I can't remember. What day was that? That was the 26th of July. Twenty-sixth of July. Yeah, they did cup raising. And the market didn't like it. We know the market didn't like it because the share price absolutely collapsed. It actually kept on falling. So it's a nice little recovery in the share price. I thought, oh, I think the market is overreacting because of that cup raising. Unfortunately. Since then, the share price has turned negative because of gold prices. Now, funnily enough, the share price of Bellevue Gold is right at probably uh, a pivotal level, 
which is about $1.25. That was the lows the share price saw back in February. Also, the share price bounced off this level back in August. It fell through that level for a brief period of time, maybe for three, three, three weeks back in September, and then rallied. So this is an important level for Bellevue Gold. But still, the chart doesn't look nowhere near as good as it did before they did this capital raising. So this is a case where capital raising completely destroys sentiment in a company. Other than that, I have no idea how the company is performing. This is just a trade for me. And what I'm trying to do with trades is try to stay away from the financial performance. Try to not have any bias when it comes to my opinion on how a company is performing. Uh, they do mention here, Bellevue declares a maiden profit, $75 million in financial year 24. That was in uh, September. And they also did a presentation not that long ago, 29th of October. Well, that's like three weeks ago. Anyway, so that's my thoughts on the chart. So the chart doesn't look any good anymore. It did until the capital raising. Oh, Simon PT says, King, Queen, Zero, Care, Factor, I love. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think monarchies and monarchists and that's an outdated, archaic thing. Uh, do away with all kings and queens. Uh, they did nothing to justify their ranks uh, just, just because they're born into the family. Why do we put them on a pedestal, that sort of thing? I, I think it's stupid. I think monarchies are stupid. Uh, that's just my opinion. Uh, okay, thank you, Sensei. Stu Percy says, I hope WiseTech keeps going down. We'll have to buy some at good prices. And Forest Hill agreed. So this is when WiseTech was going through those issues a few weeks ago. So we can see what's happened to the chart. Did WiseTech go down from there? Went down to about $100. And the answer to that is no. Share price has rallied significantly. V-shaped recovery. In fact, the share price is getting back up to levels we saw before all those shenanigans. So that was an absolutely brilliant time to buy some shares. I did not add to my position. In fact, the share price briefly fell through my uh, sell level, briefly. And this is why I don't have automatic stop losses. This is a great case, a great example, because I would have been stopped out just above 100 or around about 100, and I would be peeved off. I would be royally peeved off. Uh, this is why I have manual or just do it manually. That way I can look and say, hey, sure, it fell through briefly, but it's recovered really quickly. And now the share price is back up to where it was. So this is another case of the market overreacting. And for those who did buy into this overreaction, good for you. Congratulations. Uh, anyway, so unfortunately, why is, unfortunately, Stu Percy and Forest Hill, share price has not dropped. It's recovered pretty quickly. Health 085, interested to hear your thoughts on Marinin Metals chart, given they have a decent silver deposit. Okay, so this is another silver company. So it wasn't that long ago, I had no idea of any silver companies on the ASX. I knew there was one Adriatic, there was another one with the silver name the names. Now I have Sun Silver, Marinon Metals, Andrian, Andrian, Adrian, or something like that. Anyway, so let's have a look at Marinon Metals. Tick code MMA. Am I right? Marinon Metals, I'm right. Uh, I think the reason I know that is because MA Offshore could not have the TIG code MAA because of Marin and Metals. Chart for this, no. I am simply going to say no. No, no, no. Some nice volume coming in the last month. Okay, so if I just have a look at the volume, hmm, I, yeah, I, this, okay, I'm going to put a line right here, support level right there at 20 cents. Share price is 22 and a half cents. Share price on Friday did fall to 20 and a half cents. Okay, so a couple of things here. So my initial reaction was no, but the support level at 20 cents, so share price is just above that. The increasing volume in the last month, I am intrigued by that. So those are two things going for it. Uh, so there's not as bad as I initially thought, Marin and Metals. It's just that volume. I really like, I think volume is underappreciated. So the volume tells me something is happening here. Someone, some institutions, are getting interested in this company. So Marin and Metals. Uh, probably maybe you want to put on your watch list. I'm going to do that right now. Putting it on my watch list just to see what happens over the next few weeks. Thank you, Health085. Nick Scarly, just James Dean. Profit after tax, 60.6, 43. Now forecasting 30 to 33 million. 
Yes, Nick Scarly, which is a company I own. This is more of a long-term position, but I am concerned about this dropping profit. Now, the chart, I do have a sell point. I did have a sell point at 14.50, and I just decided not to sell uh, because the share price hasn't dropped much below it. But I don't know. This one is an interesting one. This was a long-term hold, and mm, uh, P ratio 14.3, but if they have uh, – Markup is 1.2 billion, but again, uh, with that decrease in profit, the P ratio is going to increase. But there's also the chance over the next few years the profit could double again. Uh, anyway, so I'm I've got uh, I'm conflicted when it comes to Nick Scarlett. Conflicted, yes, conflicted. I'll say that conflicted. Maybe if I am conflicted, that probably should mean I should just sell. Maybe I don't know. Just James also says, oh, God, no, Mr. Neppy, the more tax you pay, the more money goes to Endeavour Group, more DV, domestic violence, more people ending up in hospitals. More money goes to Endeavour Group. Now, to be honest with you, I'm not a big drinker. I don't drink much at all. I have had a couple of whiskey bottles. I think uh, I, if you had to ask my opinion, I do think alcohol, I wouldn't say a scourge, but Alcohol overall is not the best of things, but I don't believe in the nanny states and I don't believe these should be banned or anything like that. Uh, I think education is the best thing moving forward. Most people can control how they drink alcohol, but there's a few people who can't and a few people who drink too much alcohol and then they lose their absolute SHIT. Uh, and that's not a good thing for society at large. But again, I don't believe in nanny states. I don't believe there should be any laws when, like, for instance, what's a law that um, is in place where it's pointless? Because I'm also the, of the belief that you should not do anything that's, that, that intentionally harms someone else. Uh, and when I say harm, or intentionally harms, I mean maliciously harms someone else. Like if you break up with someone, like two people in a relationship and you break up with someone, that harms them, but it's not maliciously, it's for a reason. So like killing someone, that's harmful, maliciously harmful, harming someone, not only them, but also their family. But there's some things that are outlawed which doesn't really cause any harm. So what are they outlawed? Uh, and I, maybe it only does harms to the person themselves. So uh, so there are some laws I think it should be get rid, got rid of. and if the majority of people can handle alcohol, then that should be okay. But if alcohol destroyed and killed everyone who drank it, then that is a problem. But then also it comes back to black markets uh, and then uh, cartels and drug lords get out of it and that sort of thing. Anyway, I'm rambling on. Uh, Shafing Ding Dong, Shafai Ding Dong. Uh, why is tech all right by now? Well, yes, it would have been a pretty good buy then, but of course, I cannot give advice. That's the most important thing. It's up to you to consider whether something is a buy. Uh, but back then, now in hindsight, it was a perfect buy back then. Yeah, so thumbs up. Hope you bought some. Just James Dean, Transurban in Four Corners. I actually did see that, yeah. Uh, Just James Dean also says, if anyone is wondering, uh, capital trading less than six times price earnings, please have a look at the 20-year chart. Okay, so let's have a look at the chart, 20-year chart for capital. And what he's referring to is, if you have a look at this particular chart, we'll go 20 years. Actually, we'll have a look at the monthly chart. You're not going to like what you see. Well, yeah, well, well, this goes back. Yeah, okay. Not sure what happened here between 2004 and 2010. Well, behind, uh, you know, but it's not a good chart. Uh, they must have done, at that point in time, the share price was 500. They must have done a share consolidation somewhere along the way. I think that's without doubt. They've done a share consolidation. So let's have a look at the weekly chart and just have a look at the last 10 years to get better education, better indication. And we're going to have to get rid of the moving averages because it just totally destroys it. And just look at the look at the last 10 years. Nothing much has happened. Now, from 2020 through to now, the share price has actually increased. In fact, it's quadrupled, but it doesn't mean the share price will continue to go up. So this is definitely not a high quality company, in my opinion. And back then, I still remember this company talking about 
how the company was being harmed by the practices of uh, countries overseas, maybe Indonesia, uh, dumping of aluminium on the market or something like that. So again, that just shows you that this company is a price taker. They have no control. Uh, the management have very little control over how the company succeeds in the long run. Uh, and then that means definitely not a long-term hold, just a trade. Okay, yes, thank you. Pam had a birthday. You're welcome. Okay, Marty Scott. Hi there, Nepi, me again. So I've recently purchased POD. Or I should know what that is, POD. This is one ticket code I don't know. However, notice a couple raising on the 23rd, a bit of negativity on your favourite hot copper. Trade has been good the last two days. So not funny enough, hot copper, I sometimes do go to hot copper just to sort of gauge the sentiment, which is interesting. That's all, just to gauge sentiment. Um, other than that, I will never, ever, ever look at hot copper posts and think, oh, this could be a buy or sell on the basis of that. And to be honest with you, if there's no chatter about a company on hot copper, that's actually a massive two thumbs up for me. It's a, if there's very little chatter, I love that. Uh, if there's a lot of chatter about a company on hot copper, stay away. It's a massive red flag. Anyway. Uh, trade has been good the last two days, so not sure whether it's a good time to sell or hold for a while. Would love your thoughts on this. So, sorry, this is a little bit late. Uh, so POD, I don't know anything about this company. What is piece, POD? A piece of podium minerals. So do they mine podiums? POD. Actually, let's have a look what they do. Capital raising. Uh-huh. Nickel says nickel. So this company does nickel. I'm assuming they do nickel. You can open up the investor presentation and this will take a while, a little while. Oh, it's opening up pretty quick. I was going to say uh, Comsec will take a long time to open this document up. Uh, advancing the parts reef PGM. What's PGM again? Uh, I once uh, mining. I did know this for a little bit. Uh, platinum group metals. Yeah, I knew this. It wasn't that long ago I knew this. Uh, memory, uh, the, the, as you get older, the mind just goes. So platinum group metals. So we're talking about platinum, palladium. Uh, they did talk about nickel as well. So let's have a look. So platinum, palladium, rhodium, iridium, plus gold and base metals. So a little bit of copper, nickel, and cobalt. So funny enough, they were talking about, there was a couple of announcements talking about um, nickel. So I thought maybe this is a nickel company. Uh, interesting announcement, this, or uh, not announcement, so what do you call this, presentation? I have never had a look at this company before. There's no reason for me probably to have a look at it because it is a mining exploring company. And again, the future of this company is highly dependent on the PGMs. If they become price of these particular um, uh, commodities go through the roof, then this company's share price will go through the roof. Okay, so let's have a look at the chart for this price or piece of what's a good word for d a piece of disaster i don't know well it's a piece of disaster if the chart looks bad oh geez okay okay we'll go back we include the moving averages so this was a piece of disaster from 2021 all the way through to start of this year share price dropped from 60 cents all the way down to 2.4 cents this is another problem with mining, exploring companies or story stocks. This can happen. If the sentiment just turns from positive to negative, this can happen. There's nothing to support the share price. There's no fundamentals. There's no financials to support the share price. You won't have value investors coming in going, oh, there's value in this company at these levels. That doesn't happen. This is the problem. But in saying that, maybe the bottom has been reached. So a little bit of a run on the share price back, back in late October. And the share price has pulled back. And I would say one of the reasons why the share price has pulled back because of some of those prices. I think platinum has dropped. Palladium has dropped, I think. I could be wrong. Let's have a look at palladium. Yeah, it has dropped. So there is a bit of a relationship between the share price of this and palladium, maybe platinum as well. Okay, so again, the fortunes of this company are going to be highly dependent on the price of the commodities they want to mine. Now, the management home might have a little bit of a say in that. And I think sometimes the success of, of, of the success of a mining company is 
slightly dependent on management, but not completely. And that is the problem. Uh, in fact, some of the best mining companies might have gone bye-bye if the underlying commodity went the other way. And maybe Fortescue might have gone bankrupt if uh, the price of iron ore collapsed at the wrong time for them. Uh, in 2016, iron ore did collapse, but that was okay for Fortescue at that point in time. I believe someone did say that Tesla would have gone bankrupt if there was any sort of recession in their formative years or within that first five or so years. Someone has said that. Maybe Elon Musk said that. Um, Tesla would have gone bankrupt if a recession happened at the wrong time for them. Uh, look at this chart. Yes, yeah, so we've had the pullback. I do like this volume coming in. You can see these spikes in volume late 2023, early 2024. That's a good sign. The bottom has been reached. So there was some big buys coming in. Uh, and it, share price was going sideways at that point. So a really good buy for this company would have been around about 2 to 2.5 cents if that's your thing. Uh, but, you know, that's all I really have to say about uh, podium, podium minerals. First time I've had, ever had a look at the company uh, and I'm not sure what the negativity is, but don't pay it all that att much attention two hot copper posts. Darren, can you please tell me how to you get the thick red and green lines on your charts? Yes, they are moving averages. Okay. Well, I'm pretty sure I've done videos on this in the past. So what I'll do is uh, training view to answer this. Training view setup, moving averages, my training view setup. Yeah, so have a look for these two videos. Now, if those two videos don't answer your question, then just write uh, the question again. Yeah, so hopefully, Darren, those two uh, videos answer your questions. Hopefully. 100% uh, returns, DGL Group. It's back, baby. Still ways below NTA, but big announcement. Potentially take off, take over off our incoming as has been some interest. My only concern with that is I'm pretty sure the founder is the CEO. Uh, takeover SH has such a big holding acquired by who who's interested. Yeah. So the founder, what's his name again? I forget his name. Uh, he has a large holding. I don't think there's going to be, I don't think, I don't think there's going to be much chance of a takeover because of what Cheng Jingding says. Uh, if you actually want to know how much of a position he has, all you have to do is, I'm pretty sure in FinChat they have this. If not, Tika definitely has it. There should be an insider ownership somewhere here. Here we go, in ownership. And Simon, what's his name? Simon Henry, that's it. And he owns 53% of the company. So straight away, that tells me, tells us that if there is any takeover for this company, the founder, CEO has to say, yes, this is good for me. Uh, so more than likely, there would not be a takeover for this company. So for those who love insider ownership, this is a great company. Now, back to DGL. I think there's a chance the low has been reached, and I think there is a chance the share price of this company might be moving into an uptrend fairly soon. It does remind me of February. It looked promising back then, and we have seen the share price move above the 100-day moving average, and not only that, the share price has moved above my – oh, no, that is 100-day moving average, sorry. And the share price has moved into this sort of these red blue lines that is telling me there is a possible buy here. So it's there's two actually buy signals here. So share price has moved above the 100 day moving average, and the share price now has rallied, uh, or the share price has gone above this red line. That's another buy signal. Yeah. So this in that buy signal, so this is like a 20% drop and rise from uh, either the high or the low. So the share price actually rallied more than 20% from the low. So that can be a buy signal, also can be a sell signal, depending on other factors. Uh, so that could be causing confusion out there. Anyway, so there are a couple of buy signals here when it comes to DGL Group. I would like to see the share price get above, say, 68 cents. If I see the share price gets to 68 cents, that would be another good sign for DGL Group. Not quite there yet. But I think things are looking promising for that company. Nerd Burger says, 
Uh, mithril, silver, and gold. When is the training hold? Initially, I thought negative, but then I saw a major holder has now gone from 9.99% to 16%. Is this a good or did I misread something? Uh, mithril, silver, and gold. So again, another mining company, silver and gold. So the share price of this company drop, has dropped significantly. Okay, so what did you mention? You said something about a uh, major holder has gone from 9.999 to 16%. Well, they did do a capital raising, 12.5 million placement. And that might have might be the reason why that holding went up. Um, just looking at change in substantial holding, 25th of October. Yep, here it is. So uh, da, 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 who is it? Jupiter Investment Management, uh, 10 million shares, and then they increase that to 20 million. So how do they increase it? Exercise of options acquired as part of private placement, expiry September 2026, strike of 30 cents. So they just exercise their options according to this. Uh, okay, so that's the reason why. Any change of substantial holding since then? No. Oh, there's one on the 7th of July or 7th of November. And who is this? Uh, Bank of Nova Scotia. That's interesting. And they have also increased their holding from 9.7%. Oh, no, they've decreased it. They've increased their holding, but the voting power has decreased because of a capital raising. There was an increase in the issued and outstanding share capital number since September 2024. Okay. That was a private placement as well. Okay. So in regards to uh, – you didn't misread anything. They have increased their holding because uh, they uh, – Options, exercise options. Uh, is this a good thing? Mm, uh, I, I don't know. Again, I think it's all based off the future of silver and gold. What do you think about silver and gold in the future? If you're very bullish, then this little pullback is nothing to be concerned about. But I'm neither bullish nor bearish, I'd say that. And the share price has pulled back and get rid of this stop. And the share price has pulled back. A really good run in the share price. It's now pulled back. In fact, the share price has halved since it's high. So is this a good time to buy Trump shares in mithril, silver, and gold? Now, the good thing is there are institutions that are interested in this company. But otherwise, I can't answer anything else for you. Chris Brown. Uh, the Aussie sectors are not that hard to work out given fund managers rotate the stocks holdings into new sectors quite often. If you look at margin or market market index main page, it will tell you the sectors going up and down over the last year. Sectors that are red and down are likely to come good and grow at some point and sectors, oh, let's have a look at this. Let's have a look. You can definitely do this because I've had a look at this in the past. So if you look at the different sectors, they have a different year here. So day, week, month, year to date and 52 weeks. So IT up 69%, energy down. Now. Just because energy materials and staples are down for the last 52 weeks doesn't mean they're going to be really successful or be the best performing sectors in the next 52 weeks. One of the reasons behind that, IT has been, it's probably been the best performing sector for the last 10 years, almost. So again, doesn't mean IT is going to be the worst performing sector. Financials, I think that's probably true. Financials have done really well the last 52 weeks. I think there's a good chance financials will be one of the worst performing sectors in the next 52 weeks, energy, that could go either way. Materials, that could go either way. Staples, mm, I don't know. Anyway, uh, you also have to read a few news headlines for Global News, fund managers, et cetera, to figure out which sectors are coming off the boil and which sectors are likely to grow. Yeah, I think, uh, I think um, fund managers do that a fair bit, but I don't really look at sectors, first of all. I just look at individual companies. but. If you just like to look at sectors, I think that could be a good way to trade in the future. Look at those sectors that are performing well, starting to perform well, turning around, and just trade the companies within that sector. I think that's a good way to tr trade if that's for you. Uh, just stream, yes, float is money in trading account. AAA earns daily interest, handy for quite months. It's easy enough to liquidate, liquid, liquidate when needed. Thank you for that, Just James Dean. Uh, black top images. Check out polymetals. I'm hoping to buy in around 43 cents if it gets down below and turns north. Another company I don't know anything about. Polymetals. 
you got to spell it right first. P O L. What do they do? Silver, at least silver. Silver. They have a presentation here. I always try to go to the presentations first. And sometimes you can just have a look at about session in announcement. But presentations are pretty good. Next, silver and zinc. So another silver company. So the amount of silver companies on the ASX is starting to expand or grow. Endeavor Mine, Coba, New South Wales. Now let's have a look at the chart for polymetals. I don't think I do have a silver watch list. Maybe I should develop a silver watch list. Okay, this chart looks pretty good. A really good chart for a few reasons. The share price has really taken off uh, and the volume has really expanded. And we haven't seen much of a drop in the share price, even though silver has dropped. So this is an instance where we have seen a little bit of strength, relatively speaking, compared to the silver market or the silver sector. So yeah, polymetals, polymetals does look interesting. Now, Blacktop Images says, hoping to buy in around 43 cents. So I'm wondering if he has bought in at 43 cents. Let's have a look. Yeah, the share price has not dropped to that level since that comment. It just kept on going up. Okay, so have you bought back? Have you bought in Blacktop Images? Uh, Dev Shah's, uh, what's going on with Flight Center? 52 weeks low. Not sure if this was covered in previous videos. While there, while there, would you please also shed shade some light on Hello World? Thanks. So Flight Center and Hello World. Let's have a look at both of these companies. Flight Center. They did release something negative not that long ago, on the 18th of October. Oh, that's yeah. So that's actually after you released that comment. I definitely would have, definitely would have mentioned Flight Center in one of my videos. So Flight Center, weekly wrap up. Well, it's not showing up here. 18th of October, I mentioned Flight Center, I think. Was that the day the share price dropped? Yep, 18th of October. Um, so the share price dropped 20.44%. Why? I hear you say, if you don't know, just have a look at the announcements. 18th of October, Morgan's conference presentation, including trading update. The two most powerful, well, maybe not two most powerful worlds, but trading update is one of the most powerful types of announcement, particularly if it's a profit upgrade, profit downgrade. Now, if you do see announcement titled profit downgrade or profit upgrade, the share price more than likely will rally or drop a lot. Now, they just had another a trading update on the 14th of November, and the share price actually decreased, increased on that day. So that's why the share price dropped a lot on the 18th of October. It was a trading update. It was a negative trading update. Share price plunged. They released that positive trading update on the 14th of November. Share price went up 4.57%. So that's all there is when it comes to flight center. Overall, the chart looks negative. Now, the question becomes, do you think this company is high quality? Is there any value at these levels? That's up to you. I can't tell you right now. I don't know Flight Center enough to really say that. If you look at the weekly chart, uh, the share price is a long way short of the levels we saw prior to COVID-19, but shares on issue have probably doubled, I'm just guessing. So if you take into account shares on issue, like the market, if you just have a look at the market, actually, you can actually do that in FinChat. I don't think you can do that in TradingView. Maybe you can. But if you go to FinChat, they actually have this. So you can just have a look at the markup, not the share price. So overview, and there's a chart on the right. So you can look at price, uh, drawdowns, percentage change, short return, market cap. If you have a look at the market, the market cap of Flight Center is been going up. The, well, actually, let's have a look at the last 10 years. Yeah, the market cap of this company is fairly similar than it was pre or prior to COVID-19. Uh, so the market cap of this company has just gone sideways over the past 10 years. No growth in market cap. Uh, so that's why the share price is significantly lower than it was prior then, because cap raising, they had to raise capital to survive uh, that particular time. Uh, but other, overall, the chart looks fairly negative. There's a nice little support level at around about $14 or so. Share price is still well above that. Uh, so this is not on my radar when it comes to trade. 
is Hello World. Hello World has a nice little bounce, but again, this is not on my radar either. Looks like this company might have released something negative as well on 27th of August. Let's have a look. Oh, that would have been results, 27th of August. So let's confirm. Go back three months. Yep. 27th of August. Yes, they released the results. The market didn't like it and the share price kept on falling. We have seen a little bit of a rally recently, but not much volume coming in. So that you can see the rally back in um, June and July didn't amount to much. And I suppose this rally won't amount to much either. So not a fan of either charts. Uh, and then the question becomes, do you? what do you think about the valuation? Do you think these companies are cheap? So that's the next question. For me, the answer to that is don't know. Sensei, thoughts on Curve Beam as a stock in their new stand-up body scanner technology? I have had a look at this company very briefly in the past. So Curve Beam, I'm trying to remember what they do. Oh, share price up 9%. Uh, I don't think this company is generating any much revenue. Let's have a look. They might have a little bit. Yeah, 2.4 million. It's not bad, but we need to see that grow. So they're generating enough receipts to get me interested, but they're still burning through a lot of cash. In fact, receipts of customers 2.4 million is lower than product manufacturing costs and staff costs, not combined, separately. So that means the company is well short of being operating cash flow and free cash flow positive. Uh, again, I don't know exactly what this company does. Let me have a look. I need a refresher. Because it's been a while since I actually had a look at this company. Curve Beam. So medical. Uh, what do they do again? Uh, so they are selling a product. I do like that. They're actually selling a product. Uh, they don't say what they do here. Uh, advanced Enhanced High Rise Platform. Uh, WBCT scans with higher energy X-ray source. A lot of this goes over my head. Allows key anatomical landmarks to be identified in larger patients. Key validation steps for a robotic surgical system at two upgraded US base sites. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Uh, financially, 24 orders were impacted by group surgeon practices wanting one CT scanner for all lower extremity scans. Hip knee is a key or major driver of scans. So I don't know a lot about this company. Uh, and one of the reasons why I haven't looked further into the company is simply because the company hasn't reached or isn't getting close to becoming operating cash flow or free cash flow positive. And I think that's a very important inflection point for me personally. And if I do see them getting close to that point, I might have a closer look at that technology. So I can't really help you when it comes to the company and their stand-up body scanner technology. Yeah, I can't really answer that without delving a little bit more deeply, which Take a little bit of time on my part. Can't really do that in a video like this. Uh, but what I can do is just have a look at the chart. Uh, is the market getting excited about Curve Beam? And the answer to that is no. So straight away, this would be a no for me just based off the chart. So even though they might have a good story, they're starting to maybe increase their revenue receipts, and the market is just doesn't like this company at this point in time. And the share price keeps on dropping because no one cares about the company just yet. Now, in saying that, we have seen a little bit of an increase in volume the last two weeks or three weeks, just a subtle increase in volume. Uh, so maybe this could be near the bottom. That's Curve Beam. Zim and Mariner Metals are my two palladium silver plays. Okay. Um, so I've already talked about Mariner Metals. So Marin is silver and gold, but not palladium. They did mention PGMs, which is palladium group metals. That's according to their presentation, at least. So maybe it's not palladium. Maybe it's platinum. Uh, and Zimplats, that's definitely a group of different commodities. So let's have a look at Zimplats chart. I would say the share price has pulled back a bit, at least a bit because of palladium has pulled back a bit. Uh, and it has. Yes. I would say this company could be cheap, by the way. So they have operations in Zimbabwe, P ratio, well, P ratio is 123. But that's probably because um, profit may be down on a 
Ooh, revenue has been dropping in the last few years. 2021, this company had a profit of 755 million. Current market this company is 1.5 million. Will they get back up to those levels? Well, revenue is dropping. That's a bad sign for Zimplatz. Okay, Innocent, dance a jig because Palladium the plaque was breaking out. Hopefully PGMs, Platinum Group Metals, maintain the momentum. Thanks for sharing your journey. You're welcome. Uh, Anderson gave us, maybe gives us some insight why Palladium made a move last week. Let's have a look. Let's have a read. The news that moved Palladium last week was USA talking to the G7 to sanction Russian Palladium. Between Russia and South Africa, about 80% of world production combined I worked for Anglo-American and spent a good amount of time in the Platinum Belt, where most of the South African mines are located beside each other. Thank you for that information, and said I had no idea. And that's another reason why I like your comments, particularly if you provide something I know nothing about. I learned something, and I've learned at least one thing today. A few names that may interest anyone in the South African Platinum Belt, Impala Platinum, Anglo-American Platinum, Northern Platinum, Sibanya Stillwater, that name's familiar. Uh, Anglo-American is also familiar. Those are the big ones I own them all. My year's auditing then pays off. Hopefully, Platinum keeps on going bananas. Well, maybe not going bananas, but goes bananas in the future. And you are correct. Plat Palladium, Platinum, and Rhodium are the main PGMs. Tend to be found near each other. Zimplats will have Palladium. Anglo-American is a majority owner of Zimplats. Something else I didn't know. Anglo-American is a majority owner of Zimplats. So Anderson just giving us just nugget after nugget. Oil down is by the dip. Oil down is by the dip. Uh, let's have a look at oil. Where's oil here? Oil down by the dip. It's if oh, if we have a look at the weekly chart for oil. Oh dear me, trading view always auto fit. If it falls below sixty four dollars, that would be concerning. That would be sort of like a breakdown of a support level. It's just not doing anything at the moment. Oil is just going sideways. There's no trend, no interest. I have no interest in oil. At this point in time, it's been going sideways for about two years. I have no interest in oil. Not sure if it's by the dip. I do own Karoon, by the way, and also Brookside. So if oil does go on a nice run, that would be nice. But at this point, yeah. I should do more Nepi investigates, I think. Uh, what I might do now is, uh, sorry, Roger Dunn. Again, I can't pronounce your name. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the top of the list. Because I actually missed, I missed a question here. Okay, so Sensei, it is, I'm still, he's still holding, or she, will be she, still holding RFT, Rectifier, long-term play. I actually did sell out of Rectifier just because of the shenanigans with uh, the turnover of uh, people within the business, directors, that sort of thing. Uh, what's it doing? I haven't looked at this chart for a long, long time. And this is probably what? Share price actually popped up the other day. Rectifier popped up 37.5% on Tuesday and then dropped uh, the other day. Uh, share price going sideways. I think it has reached the bottom. But again, this is a case where I think I need a little bit more news when it comes to the company. Uh, so that's Rectifier. But long-term play, yeah, could work out in the end. Uh, Sensei, talking about five-year anniversary of this channel. You're talking about next year, 20th of August, 2025. Uh, this could be a standalone video, I think. What made you start? Yeah, this is a standalone video. I could do a standalone on that. He also asked, what's your thoughts on Cyclofarm? It's a company Sydney YouTuber Spanian promoted on his live streams and said it's the only stock he's invested in at the moment. Okay. I don't know anyone called Spanian. Uh, let's have a look at Cyclofarm. I don't know anything about this company. I think they're a medical company uh, selling something. So let's have a look. No announcements. I would never become that concentrated. So this Spanian could become really rich or he lose all his money. So you'd have to have a lot of conviction in the company, the management. I just can't do that. 
And the thing is, you learn, you hear about all those people who do this and are successful, but you don't hear about the people who lose all their money. Sometimes you do hear, oh, I had a friend who lost all their money, but you don't hear about it. So there are putting all your money into the one company is brought with danger. And if I went down that path, I would need control. And what I mean by control, I need to be running the company. Uh, anyway, they actually released a, a training update on the 27th of August. That's a long time ago. Uh, they signed an agreement with VA and first Department of Defense order received. That sounds interesting. I'm trying to remember what they say. I can't remember. So Veterans Health Administration, hopefully they have an about section here. Yeah, they do. Uh, yeah, radio pharmaceutical company, da, 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 provide nuclear medicine and other. Actually, I have, I'm pretty sure that sounds familiar. I have a feeling I might have done a video on this company. Cyclo. Maybe I haven't. I thought maybe I have, but maybe I haven't. Uh, the reason I say that, that sounds familiar. The company's mission is to provide nuclear medicine and other clinicians with the ability to improve patient, improve patient care outcomes. Circular Farm achieves this objective primarily through the provision of its core radio pharmaceutical product, Tech Vegas. Sounds too much like Tech Vegas. Using functional lung ventilation imaging. So this technology is a structured ultra-fine dispersion of radioactive labelled carbon produced by using dry technetium, 99 metre in a carbon crucible, blah, blah, blah. So most of that is going over my head. Uh, Technagus approved indication for use, for use for use. They should have fact-checked this. Maybe not fact-checked, but spell-check. Anyway, um, okay, so... I don't know much about this company. Uh, da, 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 okay, what will I do here? I'm going to have a look at the half yearly report and accounts just to see how they are performing financially. Uh, this is just on a half year basis. So what we can do is have a look at their, where is it? Uh, where's the, oh, it's way down here. So revenue. So this is half year. 13, oh, revenue has dropped. $13.3 million of revenue. The company is well, well away from being I mean, profitable, according to this. Uh, loss of $7.5 million for the year. So straight away, that's a little bit of a red flag for me, just a little bit of a red flag. Uh, why did the revenue drop there? I want to know why the revenue dropped. So is rate, sales revenue dropped, other revenue dropped. Uh, how much uh, assets and equity do they have? So equity of $47.5 million. Uh, based off this, they did a pretty big capital raising during the year because cont contributed equity increased from $63 million to $87 million. So let's just confirm that. They did a pretty big capital raising. Here we go. Capital raising completes oversubscribed share purchase plan in June. And they must have raised a fair bit of money for that. So it's like $24 million or something. Uh, so fund institutional placement of $20 million and a $4 million share purchase plan. Yep, that, that jibes right with what I'm reading here. Okay, so equity is up significantly because they did a cover raising. That's it. Uh, and let's have a look at the cash flow or the uh, yeah, cash flow statement. Burning through lots of cash. There it is, proceeds from issues of shares. All I had to do was have a look at the cash flow statement. That's absolutely, absolutely true. So cash and end, $27.6 million. Okay, so Okay, so this is a case where I don't see anything um, that triggers me to have a close look at this company based off their financials. So, again, it comes back to the technology. What is your conviction when it comes to the technology? I don't have any conviction at all. Uh, there's that saying that you can't borrow conviction. So our conviction on companies are going to be completely different from each other. So obviously this guy has high conviction on this company. Uh, what's his name again? Spanian has high conviction of Cyclo Farm, the only stock he's invested in. It could be a really good play. It could be disastrous. It could go either way. So obviously he has high conviction uh, and he's probably done a lot of research on the company, a lot of research on the technology. And then I have a look at this chart and I would not even be near this company at this point in time. Uh, even if I had the high conviction, I'd be like, oh, the chart looks pretty good, bad. Share price looks like it's going to fall through support. A dollar and thirty-eight cents. 
Now, funnily enough, the chart looks pretty good up until, well, looked good for a brief period. Uh, so I have no interest in this company right now. And what's the market of the company? It must be pretty big. 153 million. So there's already some promise, some potential price into the markup of this company. Uh, and the share price could fall, it could drop 80 to 90% from here if they don't follow through with any of the conviction that people think. Uh, does, that, does that make sense? If the conviction people have, they start to lose it. Uh, if they don't uh, show any momentum in their in their business. Hopefully that makes sense. Anyway, so that's my only brief thoughts on Psycho Farm. I'm not there with that company. Just James Dean says, time to plow into QBE. 10.7 up here is reasonable value. Go ahead. I could I could imagine trading QBE, by the way. Uh, Just James Dean says, also, would you trade TCL? Seems range-bound, low-risk trade. Let's have a look at Transurban. Let's have a look. Uh, weekly chart. It's very close to the bottom of the, the range. This range has been in place for four years. It is close to that bottom. You can see it. It's hit the bottom of this range. One, two, three, fell briefly below it. So that could have been a negative sign that rallied back up and then hit it again back in July this year. Now, again, looks like it's getting very close to the bottom of this range. So, yeah, this would be a low risk. If it hit, say, $12.25, that's a low-risk play because if it falls below $12, you just sell, and then you could get a nice little 10% return. Maybe that. I'd like a better return than that, though. So I can definitely see where you're coming from, Just James, Dean. Okay, Mr. Hypo, uh, Smart Parking. It's pumped today. It's, I mean, it's since May, $0.40. Cents. Hopefully it keeps on going. Growth of the company only seems to be going stronger. Yep, I agree. So I talked about smart parking in Friday's 15th of November's uh, video. Uh, Roger says, also bought in May after appeared in Nepi's video. Nice little pickup. Should be stronger next year once they embed the new acquisitions. Sensei says, well, smart parking. Did you both go big initially or a few thousand invested? Was nine cents in July 2020. Okay, so don't really have to talk about smart parking because... I talked about in yesterday's video. Thoughts on WBT, which is Weebit Nano. Again, this is a story stock. This is a classic story stock. You'll see the share price go up and down in waves just because of sentiment. And the share price is now going higher, hence a little bit more interest in this company, I would say. Why probably we got, I would say in Hot Copper, this, the, the forum for Weebit Nano is going off its chart because the share price has rallied a lot. Of the past few days. But again, a story stock. Why do I say this is a story stock? This company has no revenue. This company could be highly successful. It might not. We just don't know. We just don't know. So again, it's conviction. Do you have high conviction about that technology? I don't. Put that way. Uh, they just did a couple raising, by the way, uh, two days ago, 50 million. And to be honest with you, that's a really good couple raising. Share price has taken off. That's what, exactly what management should do. Share price takes off, do a cap raising. Uh, this could be the end of the... I'm not sure why the share price is rallying. Uh, have they released anything? No. Nah. They did a price query on the 12th because the share price is going bonkers. Let's have a look at their price query. Have they mentioned anything interesting in this? And the answer to that is no. In fact, they've been completely boring. In fact, the only part of this particular announcement where they could have said something interesting, they said... Webit does not have any further information, which explains the recent trading in its securities. This is just a bit of bit of hype. Uh, that's it. So that's all I'm thinking about when it comes to Webit Nano. I probably wouldn't even trade this. There's too much. It, it just could be, yeah. I, yeah. It's not for me. Put it that way. Not for me. Being a little bit more risk averse, I could see Webit Nano going higher and going significantly lower. Significantly higher and significantly lower from here. Okay, we get to an announcement or a question I was I completely missed yesterday, and this is from Forest Hill. So I am going to end this video on this question. Thanks, Nepi. Metavise as yesterday's video look dip, looks tempting, but volume is low. Uh, it does ring a bell. Volume is low. 
Let's have a look at the daily. Is the daily chart? Yeah, the volume is low. Uh, yeah, the volume is low. In fact, well, let's actually confirm this. It's harder to look at the chart because there's been these spikes in volume. So let's have a look at the trade history. Yeah, the volume wasn't that big when the share price popped up 16%. 1.2 million is not that extreme. So we've seen bigger volume in the past. So it's not really big volume, which tells me the buyers aren't that enthusiastic. Uh, anyway, so share price did have a little bit of a rally. It was up again slightly on Friday on decreasing volume. I don't think this is a sign the share price is going to go higher from here. Uh, anyway, so that's MetaVisor. I sort of agree with Forrest Hill there. Uh, I wouldn't say the volume is low, but not magnificent. Uh, so there is concern about liquidity. If it's only a short-term trade, yeah, I probably wouldn't use it as a, I probably wouldn't uh, trade it at all, even in the short term. Also, can you please look at Vertex, VTX? This, that name is familiar. I normally stay away from mining exploration companies, but their reward gold mine goes in production in January and all announcements so far are very positive. Vertex. Now, interesting enough, there is one way I can become interested in a mining company, and that's if they're about to go into production in the next, say, six months. I can become interested in a, comp a mining company like that, but again, even then, the share price could go up, up or down based off the underlying commodity to their mine. So Vertex, up 7.9% on Friday. Let's have a look at the announcements. Progress update at high grade reward gold mine. Let's just confirm that Forest Hill is right. I'm not saying Forest Hill is wrong, but who knows? Maybe uh, they're living in asylum and they're making things up. We just don't know. Civil's completed. And just based off this, what I'm reading here, yeah, the yeah, Forest Hill is probably right. And Vertex on track for January commissioning of the plant. The reward, reward gold mine is well placed for a simple startup. I like those words, simple startup. Uh, so it looks like they are moving in the right direction, Vertex. Now let's have a look at the chart. I would say because they are gold, was it gold? Yeah. Uh, the share price might have pulled back a little bit. But if you do see a little bit of strength there, yeah, it's pulled back a little bit. And I can definitely understand why the share price has run up. So August, what happened in August? Why did the market get really excited in August? Let's go back a year. So we're talking about, ooh. So they did a placement to advance the high grade reward gold mine. Uh, next high grade gold producer presentation. This does sound intriguing. I have to delve a little bit more deeply into Vertex, uh, but the chart does look, oh, chart does look interesting. We have seen a little bit of pullback because gold has pulled back. But if this is the end in the pullback in gold, that could be, this could be a nice little buy the dip situation. And also the volume, look at the volume, it's just exploded. Now there was a peak in volume back in May. So again, volume sometimes precedes price action. That could be true for Vertex. So this chart does look good, I like the volume, and the very fact they're going into production in January, two months away, uh, is actually promising. Markup is only 26.8 million. That sounds fairly low. I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have a look at these, I'm going to have a look at their presentations. Uh, have a look at their cash flow report also, the activities, um, those sort of things, uh, because I just want to see how much, the one thing I want to really want to know is they're going to production, but how much production do they envisage? How much cash flow are they expecting? That sort of thing. So I would hope they have that because uh, this company is fairly small. So that probably indicates to me that they're not going to be producing a lot of gold. But I could be wrong and maybe the market's missing this one. Okay, here we go. Project Life. Is it the same project? It says Hill End. Free cash flow, 41 million pre-tax, project life for two years, gold production, uh, 50,000 ounces, uh, revenue of 150 million, IR 110% pre-tax, only saying cost 1,833. Okay, so not long line life, 
not a lot of free cash flow. It's fairly small. But is that the right goal, mine? That looks like a different goal. It's got Hill and Gold. I would like to see the um, Reward Gold information. Anyway, that's all I have for this particular video. If you have any questions, any thoughts, leave those in the comment section of this video. Otherwise, I'm not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who's qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a good day. Bye.